Hey everybody, it's the Musical Gamer again. Welcome to a new Let's Play of a very different game. Crusader Kings 2, a grand strategy game made by Paradox Studios. I have really taken to playing this game as of late. I think I've got over 100 hours logged into this thing already since I bought it about a year ago. But, as you all know, I love strategy games. I love... XCOM, I love Valkyria Chronicles, I love the uh, Growlancer series, which started off as uh, tactical RPGs, but this isn't so much an RPG as it just is a strategy game, a grand strategy game set in medieval Europe. I think you can start somewhere in the 700s and you can go all the way to the 1400s if you really want to, um, but you can pick any nation in Europe or uh, the Middle East, or Eastern Europe, or even Africa and India, if you have the right DLC. And you can take your family dynasty, your very own family, which you control, and can determine what happens to them. You take them from your start point all the way to the end of the game, which is, I believe, sometime in the mid-15th uh, century, so sometime in the 1400s. That is your one goal, basically, throughout this game, and whatever happens, happens. Some really weird and crazy things can happen, like uh, an ex... Well, not an ex... Uh, a half-brother trying to steal your throne, or some form of long-estranged relative trying to claim your titles, or you could do the same to them. It's, it's, it's pretty complicated, but it's a lot of fun, and... I wanted to do this game. It's going to be quite different from other games I have, because it's... This is... This is, like, real strategy. Uh, not not so much, like, uh, tactical strategy. It's more of, like, micromanagement strategy. Because, I mean, if we put on the independent realm mode... These are all of the independent kingdoms I could pick from. And when I say I could pick from, I quite literally mean... I could pick to be anybody. I could be the leaders of these, peop of these kingdoms. Or... I could even be uh, vassals underneath the leaders of these kingdoms, if I so wanted to. But I'm not going to do that, because that would be really boring. What I'm going to do is, I'm going to be starting here, in the rolling green hills of Ireland. Don't kill me for my accent. I'm going to be starting here, I'm going to be taking control of this kingdom. I usually, if I were to start in Ireland, this is where I would start. Uh, I've played a lot of different scenarios. Uh, I've taken control of the Byzantine Empire. From much earlier start date. And I have refounded the Roman Empire from that. I have... <laughs> yeah, you can do that. I've also taken Germanic people. Because um, pagan religions play different compared to Catholic or Orthodox. Or even Muslim religions. Because there's a religion map mode. And you can see Catholic, Sunni. This is Orthodox. This is the pink. Um, Mephisa Christian. There's a lot <laughs> There's a lot of different things to take into consideration and uh, think about when you're going to start this game, but I'm going to be starting here, and I'm going to be using the Ruler Designer DLC to create myself a little bit of um, uh, a tougher challenge than just starting straight out. So let's... I like those eyes. Sure. Uh, I want a better beard. Can I have a better beard? No, not not a porn stash. I want an actual beard. Um, hey, you know that's fine. I guess change the hair color just a little bit and the hairstyle. Ooh, perfect. That is perfect. I uh, can't really even see my ears. Mm, too gout, too or gaunt, I should say. Too fat. Okay, that looks fine. And, uh, oh, let's see, I already know what coat of arms I want. What is it again? It is... I have this saved somewhere. So I'm not sitting here forever. Okay. Let's get you... to 93. Uh, oh, wait, I need to change the uh, layout first. There you go. Party triangle. Because as we all know, emblems like to have parties. Uh, this, is, this one's going to take a while. I need to get to number three. 
I wish I could just... I wish I could just type over this instead of having to scroll. Eh, oh well. I gotta get to number three for you. I'm almost there. There. And I have to get to 158, I think, straight for this one. Oh, come on. Just want to get into the game already. Or at least start to develop my character. Oh my god, my finger's getting tired. <laughs> uh. Come on, one more. Boom. Okay. Now let's get an emblem for this side. And I want... This emblem. Now I want this to be... This red color. Uh, I want you to be green. I think I'm going for a really kind of funky looking emblem, but one that will strike fear into my enemies because they will know it is the crest of whatever I decide to name my family. Yeah, that looks good. That looks perfect. Now let's just randomize a dynasty name. Uh, McCarthag. Ooh, I like that. And I already know who I'm going to be naming my first ruler. I'll be naming him after the glorious Welkin from Valkyria Chronicles. Give me that. And now this is the more interesting portion. Uh, we get to determine what kind of statistics we want our character to have. I can pick some different stuff, like I can give myself sons and daughters to start with, because, as you know, keeping a family line alive, you need to have a family. I could do that. I could change my uh, fertility rate, which is the odds of me having children, as well as my health, which is basically the odds of me staying alive. The higher your health number, the better chances of you living. And these are your statistics. You have diplomacy, martial stewardship, intrigue, and learning. Diplomacy has to deal with how you handle your uh, vassals or your alliances. The higher your diplo diplomacy score, the easier it would be to maintain or get people to like you, that kind of thing. Martial has to do with how you lead your armies in battle. The higher your martial, the better, better uh, warmonger you are. The better tactical advantages you'll get while leading your armies. Yada, 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 you get the idea. Stewardship, I find, is extremely important. Because stewardship has to do with how you run your kingdom. Stewardship <laughs> is directly tied to how many vassals you can have, as well as your uh, the size of your domain, which is how many territories you can control for yourself without having to hand them over. Intrigue is also pretty important. It has to deal with espionage and spies, and the higher your intrigue, the harder it is to plot against you, and the easier it is to plot against others. Plots are very important. Plots you can kill people with, as well as uh, dethrone them and other things. And learning has to do with technology. The higher your learning score is, the quicker technology spreads and can accumulate. And now for the even more interesting part, traits. These green numbers mean that traits will decrease your age. As you can see, my age is 19 out of a max of 50. Um, the These negative greens basically are really negative traits that you can put on your character and they will affect you negatively but they will lower your age score meaning you will have a longer lifespan potentially uh red ones are usually good traits in that they give you pluses to stuff but they increase your age say if i take crusader all of a sudden that 30 made me 49 years old so to start with making a character you need to kind of pick and choose your traits. You need to give yourself both negative traits and positive traits. Otherwise, you'll be starting with a ridiculously old uh, ruler, which is not a good thing. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a real challenge, and I'm going to be picking the inbred trait, which is, I think, the worst one in the game. All those negatives are really, really bad. And I will also now be giving myself some good traits to kind of, you know, balance it out. 
and give myself a fighting chance. I will be giving myself... Uh, I'll start from the bottom here. I'll be making myself just, as well as brave, and kind, as well as... Do I want... Yes, I want diligent. Oh boy, do I want diligent. And... If I give myself chaste, I I really won't be having any kids anytime soon. Because that inbred trait lowers my fertility by like 30%. Which is like really bad. Hmm. What other ones do I want? I can give myself quick. Which will... Give myself... Yeah, I'll give myself quick. I may be inbred, but I am a quick inbred bastard. I could actually give myself the bastard trait. <laughs> Yes, being a bastard is actually a trait. Uh, I can give myself legitimized bastard. Um, one more trait should do it, but I don't know what. Give myself temperance, or I could be charitable. Charitable would be really nice for my diplomacy. Uh, ooh, or gregarious. Mmm, you know what? I'm gonna give myself gregarious, and now I'm 20. Okay, that's it. 20 is a decent age. I don't need to be 16. 20 is fine. Uh, so I am an inbred, just, brave, kind, diligent, quick, and gregarious individual. A lot of, quite a few good traits offset by one really bad trait. Inbred can make things really, really difficult. Because you could just drop dead really quickly from being inbred. You can just go incapable and then you can't do anything. You can't even have kids. So here's hoping that I actually get something good going on here. Uh, I could have given myself the lustful trait to incre increase my chances of having a kid. But there's some other ways around that. I'm going to be starting here at Stanford Bridge, which is 1066. Right now, the state of the world is William the Conqueror. Or William the Bastard, I should say. Duke William the Bastard of Normandy is currently fighting over a succession war of England. And England is also currently fending off uh, an invasion by Harold Hed uh, Hedrade. Or Hedrade. I don't, Hedrade, I don't know how you pronounce that. From Norway. They're both fighting over the English crown. This can go any way. History dictates that... England, uh, or that William is the one that won the war and became William the Conqueror. But, you know, once you hit play and you start, uh, history doesn't matter anymore. The world can take really different and strange turns. This game can get really, really crazy. Um, I can pick a focus, which basically gives me certain bonuses. I'm going to pick family to start with, so I can I can start a family and keep the McCarthic line going. And I can pick an ambition, which is more personal. Mine right now is to get married. I need to be married. I need to get married as soon as possible. I also need to appoint... Um, ooh. Ooh, you are a good chancellor. Uh, okay, I'm just going to appoint my council real quick. Get you... You, you're all the best at what you can do here. <laughs> Spymaster really isn't that great. Okay, I have my council. These numbers determine kind of how effective they are at what they do. Uh, they have different choices of how I can use them. I can have my chancellor improve dip diplomatic relations. I can fabricate, fabricate a claim on some territory. I can also sow dissent in a territory to basically soil the relationship between uh, a liege lord and their vassals, which can help when preparing for war. I'm going to have you fabricate a claim there. Um, I'm going to have my martial research military tech in my capital, which will increase my military technology. I can also have him train troops, which will improve my army size, as well as suppress, res suppress revolts. Which lowers the revolt risk in a county and also increases an arrest chance if I want to imprison somebody. My steward, I can have him collect taxes, which will increase the amount of money I earned. I earn, which is my wealth up there. 
I can also have him oversee construction to speed up build time and return, uh, research economy tech, which is what I'll have him do. My spy master has a very important job in that I'm going to have him scheme. I'm going to have him scheme in my territory. I uh, helps discover plots, usually against me or any of my kin, or that might affect my kingdom negatively. Building a spy network will make me plot against other people better. And I can have him study foreign technology, which will, well, will help with the growth of my own technology. But I can only send him to foreign countries for that. And finally, my court chaplain, which basically handles all matters of religion. I can proselytize, which will, uh, which will convert counties or people to my religion. Cultural tech, which is what I will have him do, which will increase my cultural tech points. And improve religious relations, where if I send him to Rome, because I'm Catholic, if I send him to Rome to deal with the Pope, I could increase my favor with him. But I'm not going to do that. So, okay, this is how I'll start. And right now, I really need to get married. Ooh, I could marry the Princess of Norway. But do I really want to do that? Could marry the princess of uh, Denmark, or Denmark, as it's called here. She's a legitimized bastard. Brave, honest, zealous, humble. You always gotta look at their points and their traits when you're trying to pick someone to marry. Because half of their point totals get added to yours. Hmm. Princess of Navarra. You're wroth, but you're tempered kind. I don't know how you can be wroth and kind at the same time. It makes no sense to me. You'd really boost my diplomacy score. But maybe I should think of boosting my intrigue. Yeah, I don't even... Ugh. I don't know, there's so many choices. Um, you know what? I'm going to marry you, Miss Norway over here. Uh, yes, I know that because I need kids for that and I'm about to get married. Uh, let's start the clock. And get married. Oop, there we go. Can I either collect gold or prestige? I will, I will take the prestige. And I fulfilled the ambition to get married. I want to have a son as soon as possible. Holy crap. Okay. And also, as one final side note, I am not playing this totally vanilla. I have two mods that are running. They're very simple mods, but I like them. One is um, a uh, birth control mod, which will help me keep my family line um, more controlled. Because normally, you have no control over when you have kids or not. And I can choose whether I want to have kids or not. That's basically it. And the last one is I have a personal castle mod running where I can build a whole bunch of new things in my capital. So I can build a personal study, a library, garden, wine cellar, passages, yada, yada, yada. That provide me with certain bonuses and things like prestige and piety, which are two important things, which I'll get into next time. So... I know this video didn't really accomplish much other than setting up our character, but next time on Let's Play Crusader Kings 2, we'll actually start doing some stuff and try to carve our way in this world as Welkin McCarthig. Thanks for watching. See you guys next video.